Well, today I'm going to be continuing the series, uh, I believe, uh, on the up life, of course. Now we've talked about the up life, and we've been talking about the process to the up life. I believe that 2023 is the year of up. And uh, that's why I've been preaching a lot about going up, going higher, right? And uh, I believe we're upward. And I believe God has got us church, our church, as a church on an upward motion, that God is taking us upward. We're going to climb the mountain. We're going to ascend to the top. I believe God's got all those plans for us. Then I talked about how that we, uh, uh, we you know, we've got to understand the keys of how to do that. And I've been using the ABCs to spiritual maturity in order to uh, know how to go up, right? And we've gotten to the uh, uh, F, which is focus on the fruits of the Spirit. I believe we need to focus on the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, right? Long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, right? But today we're going to talk about the next one, faithfulness. Faithfulness. Now, I believe faithfulness is something that creates great uh, uh, blessing in our lives. How many like it when you're working with a faithful person? Amen. Amen. Preacher brother. Hallelujah. Right? So we love working with a faithful person. I, I, I know there's really, when you work with someone who is faithful, faithful to get work done, faithful to do what they're supposed to do, faithful to uh, obviously uh, give, faithful love, right? They're faithful, right? And in reality, Faithfulness is something that uh, it, it needs to be involved in every part of our life, in every one of the ABCs, right? Let's go back to the ABCs. A is attend church regularly, right? You need to go to God's house. Uh, he says, come on over and bring the kids, right? So the point is God wants to make, you know, to be, he wants us to be faithful to that. And, and it's important. Be a friend to sinners. God wants us to be a friend to the downtrodden, to the lost, to the broken, to the hurting, to all, uh, you know, all of these. God wants us to be a friend to the lost. I mean, that's important, right? And, and uh, we need to do these things and be faithful. Do daily time with God, right? And, and we, need to, we need to make sure that we have, and we're faithful today, and it goes on. But the point is that today I want to talk about the power. I want to talk about the power of faithfulness. Faithfulness is something that will change your life forever if you will let it change your life forever. If you will you be faithful, uh, then you will find that there is great blessing in that. Turn with me will to Psalm chapter 24. Huh? Is it up here already? Psalm 24 verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. I want you to notice here in this verse, who will ascend to the hill of the Lord? Today I want to pro I really want to share with you and I want to uh, preach on going to the top of the mountain. Going to the top of the mountain. I know that sometimes we, we think about the, the life and life is like a constant uphill battle. Am I telling the truth? Sometimes it can feel like an uphill battle. I know that when my uh, son was involved in uh, the crucible, becoming a Marine, and uh, he had to uh, march with very little food. He had to climb hills and go through valleys, and there was a couple hundred of them that had to go, I forget how many miles. It's an unthinkable amount of miles over many, many, many days, and they didn't feed them that much, and they wanted to really just break them down. Well, a few of them had trouble. A few of them had trouble at the last mountain, the last climbing, the last day. They didn't have an energy. Six of them, actually, out of the 200 had trouble, and some of them had to be carried, because why? They wanted to finish as a, as a complete group. They wanted everyone to accomplish and finish and ascend to the mountain. In reality, my son had to carry uh, at, at least one time, took his turn. I don't know how long or how much. He never brags. 
But he had to carry someone, and he's not that big. He's actually shorter than me. Now he's a lot, you know, like that, you know, for real. I talk about if I flex, I rip my mom. He, he does that real. I don't do that, you know what I mean? But the point is that he had to persevere, and then some couldn't make it, and they had to be helped. But he had to continue on until he persevered. I mean, persevere until he accomplished and he ascended to the top. He had to keep going. He had to keep climbing. Life sometimes seems like it's a crucible. It seems like that it's going to break us. Sadness comes. Hardship comes. Pain comes. Other people cause us challenges or trouble. Everybody doesn't always line up. I don't know how Jolene gets anywhere trying to carry me. But we make it one way or another. Amen? I mean, Amen. she's so amazing and talented and gifted. And, and she just keeps going and, and working hard. And I appreciate uh, Jolene so much, my wife. And, and I appreciate the fact that sometimes she has to carry me. And then there are those few times that I have to carry her. But there are times when we're helping each other move forward. We always try not to be a burden for one another. To try to go forward. But sometimes it happens. People are a burden. Sometimes jobs are a burden. Trials, sickness, issues in our life. Our emotional well-being becomes a problem. Sometimes I'm like, I'm sad and I don't even know why. Anyone else ever like that? Amen. And this is being real. Yes, it is. And sometimes I got a few things on the list, uh, you know, uh, why I'm sad. I have a few things on the list. But when I really think about it, if I was to list it, there's usually a whole lot more good on the good side than there is on the bad side. Now, there have been times in my life when the bad side has been a whole lot longer than the good side. But I look at it and I go, why am I sad? Why am I emotionally depressed? Why am I so worn out? And the point is, for me in my life, I, I look at it and I go, I should not be. I need the strength of the Lord. I am going to ascend to the top of the mountain. I am going to accomplish what God wants to do through my life. With God, all things are possible. In this world, I tell myself, you're going to have tribulation. But Bob, be of good cheer because he, the Lord, has overcome them all. Woo! There ain't nothing I can go through that God hasn't already been through and already saw victory and helped millions of people through the same junk. Amen? Amen. How could it be anyway? I live in the United States. Right? Don't get me wrong, it's getting pretty rough here sometimes. <laughs> and so I want to talk about that, that it's important for us to ascend to the top of the mountain with Jesus. I don't know if we realize it, but life is difficult a lot of times. I think everyone here realizes it. But, but, the, the, but I want you to know that if you can learn to get to the top of the mountain, if you can learn to keep climbing, if you can realize that life is full of challenges, but God is saying in this verse, who will ascend? Who will keep climbing? Who will keep going? Amen? That's what God wants us to, to do. Until you get past the just starting, it's important for us to, to just keep, not just start, but just to keep moving, to keep ascending, to keep going forward. And if we will continue, then mighty blessing, blessing will come in your life. I think about people who had to climb difficult hills. I think about Moses had to climb up the Mount Sinai. Most of you probably know that story. I'm not going to take the time to tell it every bit of it. He didn't uh, only climb halfway up the mountain and go, this looks good enough, right? But he kept climbing. And as he climbed to the very top of the hill, he got there and God had given him an assignment, get to the top. Now I'm preaching about all of you have an assignment. Yeah, we preached about it last week. Uh, I mean, not last week, a few weeks ago. Uh, we preached about assignments. And I believe we have assignments. And I believe our life has assignments. And our connections have assignments. And I believe all of that. But we're never going to fulfill the assignment if we don't climb the hill. Moses had an assignment. Climbed to the top of the hill. And I, and he got to, uh, he was given the Ten Commandments. Now, how many think the Ten Commandments are pretty important? What if you had climbed halfway and decided, you hey, know what, this looks like a nice, easy place. That looks a lot rougher to get up there. Moses climbed to the top. Elijah climbed to Mount Carmel. And he prayed just a 14-word prayer. And God did a miracle. Amen? 
The fire of God fell down on the altar. 14 words after the prophets of Baal doing all their stuff and trying to get fire and trying to get, and cutting themselves and harming themselves. He prayed. He climbed to the mountain. He prayed a 14 word prayer and God's fire fell down. Amen. Amen. But part of that process was getting up the mountain. In your life, I know there are difficult things happening. That's why I preached the sermon last week. God stopped me dead in my tracks and said, tell them to pray bold prayers. Don't pray wimpy prayers. Pray prayers of boldness. Ask God for the great things, the powerful things, the things only God can do. You can do the other stuff. Bold prayers. <clears throat> Because I know right now that life seems to be sometimes crushing around us. But God is wanting us to understand that his goal in our life is for us to keep climbing. He wants us to climb like Peter climbed, like James climbed. He wants us to climb like John climbed the mountain and all through him climbed the mountain of transfiguration. He wants us to see the glory of almighty God. Amen? Amen. I want you to notice something very clearly, though. The blessing of God was at the top of the mountain. That's where the blessing of God is lots of time. It's not always a physical mountain you climb. It's the daily grind. It's the daily of overcoming the emotional struggles and challenges that are in your life. The tiredness, the, the things that are going on around us when they're telling us the reality that we know to be true, that, 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 that we understand the reality. And this reality is that, that men can't have babies, but they're trying to tell us that men can't have babies. Right? We're, we're looking around going, this world's upside down and backward. How can somebody even say that kind of thing? If I was a woman, I'd be mad. I mean, you get mad. Women just get mad if I go, yeah, man, having a baby is real painful. I just start talking about that I know all about it. Right? It's just not right for me to talk about it, let alone say, well, I can do it too. I'm surprised they get away with that. Let alone get away with lying straight to the face of our children and our kids. And our society and telling them this garbage that you're supposed to believe things that aren't true. Let me tell you something. The Bible makes it very clear that he made man and he made women. Amen? Amen. 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 That wasn't a very good clap for that one. That was pretty solid. You know what I mean? But that's the way it is in our society. We start thinking, well, maybe there's somebody here that don't believe that. Well, you know what? They need to believe that because that's the truth. Amen? Amen. All right. There you go. Are as tired as I feel. Anyway, <laughs> I am wore out today. If you really want to know the truth of it, I have ran and ran for five days straight, and I just I am tired today. You don't want to I'm good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but we we need to understand this truth. See, I want us to understand. You won't just get to the top. Of the mountain just by doing nothing but I'm here to tell you you're gonna have to fight to get to the top of your mountain yes. Yes. you're gonna have to climb and it's uphill and it's troubling and it's difficult and there's lies all around us there's people that are gonna tell you you're stupid and people are gonna tell you dumb people are gonna try to drag you backwards people are gonna try to intimidate you people are gonna try to stop you Satan's gonna try to stop you he's gonna try to keep you <coughs> weak and defeated and beat down and frustrated with life but I'm here to tell you I'm going to ascend to the top of the mountain and I believe all of us are going yes. to Amen. 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 there are three kinds of people that I want to talk about today uh, in life and in actuality I heard another preacher mention these three things one time and I decided to write a sermon around it but the point is and, and of course and he, he had preached about it too but the point is that I loved what he had to share he said there are three kinds of people in life and in the church and in our walk with God there are these three people there are quitters there are campers and there are climbers there are quitters Quitters start the climb, but then they quit. That looks good. 
I like that person's life. Like Ben talked about today. Ben's, you know, saying, listen, I came here. It was really rough. It was tough. In actuality, he didn't have time to share his little testimony about finances. But the point is, he came here for a job. Then the job went away. And then he had to stay here and make work a different job that didn't make enough money for his family. He works in the oil fields and, and it closed down. And, and then he had to do something else to survive. And he did something else. And they tried to make it through. And they made it through. They fought in order to get through. But you know what? It would have been easy to quit and say, well, you know what? I don't have that job no more. I'm going to quit. Since then, though, he's gotten raises and blessings. He's got a new position, right? Now, he needs to go a little higher for it to be comfortable. It doesn't ever seem completely comfortable. And it would be nice for him to get another raise. But I believe another raise is coming. Let me tell you something. I, I don't always tell this about people, but God supplies for them. And they make commitments. Yes. They, they, they even Dolores wants to be home with the children and wants to uh, 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 teach them at home and, and homeschooling. And that's a tough decision. My parents made the same decision. And I know that's a hard. In this day and age, it takes two people working to make the money to live. How many know that to be true? But you know, that's what they've been committed to. And I'm using them a little bit as an example, but that's what they've been committed to. It's not easy to do that on one income nowadays. And tough times come and hardship come. But I will tell you this. There, I, I'm, I'm not going to embarrass you, but, but I know you probably, I'm going to say this. It should not be embarrassing. This should be uh, something unhonorable. And I'm not trying to take his blessing from him. But as soon as they get paid, they tithe online instantly. They, I know exactly when they get paid. And sometimes they get paid in the middle of the night and the offering comes in the middle of the night. That's awesome. It comes electronically on Thursday. Oh, it's actually Friday morning at 1.05. And my phone would go ding. <laughs> do you understand? And it is an automatic. I'm sure they got to do it. But the point is that the, the, the faithfulness, and even when they don't have it, they're still being faithful. Why? Because God blesses faithfulness. Yes. Yes. God blesses faithfulness. A tithing's not easy for me either sometimes. And I say it's not easy. I mean, yes, uh, tithing's automatic for me. I would rather not eat, which you can tell I don't do that very often. I eat most of the time. <laughs> but the, the thing is that the, the, I, I, faithfulness, I would rather have other trouble than to have trouble with God. I, I want to be faithful to him so that he can open up the door, especially when I'm wanting something to happen in my life that is extraordinary. I want to make sure that I got God on my side fighting for good. Amen? Amen. Because he says he will. So faithfulness is important. And look what God's done. They've been able to stay this way. Where she doesn't necessarily have to work another job. Even though she works very hard. I'm not trying to say that. But a secular job. But the point I'm trying to make to you all of us today. We can all be faithful. Quitters start the climb but quit because it gets difficult. There are people who climb uh, uh, so high, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are people that though that climb so high and then they camp. Those are the campers. <laughs> people will get to a certain place and they go, wow, this is a nice place. I'm going to camp out right here. Right? Got a nice brook. Nice. You know, it's got electricity. It's, it's got a good plan. I'm going to camp out here. These are the lukewarm. And, and they just camp out. And then there's the climbers. The climbers, they just keep climbing. You're either a quitter a camper or a climber. When I think about quitters, yeah, I, I see quitters as like, and I'm, I'm sorry, quitters are like crybabies. Notice how when people quit, they're like they're, they're whining all the time. Oh, I had this problem, you don't understand. I had this difficulty, you don't get it. You don't have my life, you don't have my trouble, you don't have my problems. They talk themselves into quitting. Don't talk yourself into quitting. Now, God may say stop something because it's not right for you. It's not good for you. It's not the plan of God for you. It's not where you're supposed to be gone. It's not the mountain you're supposed to be climbing. And God may say give up. Stop. Get over on this mountain. And let me tell you something. Something I learned a long time is something's wrong or bad doesn't get better with time. <laughs> bad doesn't get better longer. 
If you're in a bad situation or a bad going a bad direction, it's okay to stop. This sermon is not about trying to push through to something that ain't God's plan for your life. Amen. And and, and my point to you is that, that I'm saying is that don't quit on the good. Don't quit on the right. Don't quit on the plans of God. Don't quit on the assignment that God has placed in your life because there's bricks in the road and there's walls in the middle and there's trouble and there's people trying to attack you and stop you. I'm telling you, quitting is something that all of us have done before and quitting has bad consequences. They were talking about yesterday on the radio. I was listening to the radio and somebody was talking about their son quit. And I think it's some kind of thing that's went viral or something. So their son quit soccer, I think it was. And, 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 the, and the guy who's a champion skier or something like that, he told us, he went to his son. He said, so I know I should have ran more. I should have tried harder, but I just don't want to do this no more. I'm quitting. And he goes, fine. If you should have ran more, then and he's, he's like, what do you want to do? I should run more. He said, yeah, run up that mountain. And so he made him run up this mountain and, and all this stuff. And it went viral. Oh, he's such a mean dad. He made his son run up the mountain. You know what I mean? <laughs> because he quit soccer. And, and really, when it got back to it, the son's idea was to run the mountain in reality. I don't get me wrong. The father was behind it and said, okay, run the mountain, right? The point was that quitting was bad for him. But he realized it was bad and he needed to make a transition in his life. He needed to be strengthened and he needed to do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Yeah. See, and quitters are, are just, they're, they're, they're negative thinkers. They caught themselves out of quitting. They give up too early. They abandon the climb because things are tough. Quit, quitters end up bitter and depressed uh, because of what happened. They end up frustrated about it. And, and, and they just drag that junk around in their life. I quit this. I, I should have finished this. I should have done better with this. And, 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 they, and they just constantly find themselves dragging it around. And, and, it, and it hurts them for the future. All of us have quit something before. And that's okay. You, you need to learn from it. Amen? You need to learn from it. And, and if you're in that spot today and you're, and you're thinking, I can never get back to where I need to be, that, that I, can, I can never get back on the horse again, I can never walk in God's plan for my life again, I messed up so bad, I've quit everything, I've stopped everything, all the flow of God's blessing in my life, let me tell you something, the best, you, need to just, you just need to get to the place where you realize you messed up. Ask God to forgive you if it's a sin involved in it. Ask God to forgive you. And then ask God to give you the new assignment, the new mountain to climb. And get started climbing the mountain God's called you to climb. Amen? Amen. It's going to be hard. People quit because it's too hard. Some people even tell me, I just thought God would just like poof and give it to me. I thought that it would just be easy. Poof, poof, poof. Make a miracle, miracle, miracle. Plan. Oh, yeah, easy, easy, easy. Here's your bed. Lay down. Let's, cr let's carry you up the mountain. Amen. Life is uphill climb. But I'm here to tell you that the view from the top is worth it because I've descended to the mountain in things in my life. And there ain't nothing more full of joy and hope and future and plans and, and the encouragement God gave me from that when I, when I paid the price and I climbed the mountain and I checked out the view. I, I know that Ben and Dolores had just went on vacation and they went up to uh, Lake Tahoe. And, and I told them, you've got to go up, up, the, up the little um, the ride. Not a ride. It's uh, I forget what the gondola. Huh? The, the gondola. you got to take the gondola to the top of the mountain and take the gondola up there. It's called Heavenly and it's got the right name and you go about halfway three quarters of the way up and you get off and there's this view. It's one of the most, especially when it's snow around the, around the lake. It is the most beautiful. I get chills just thinking about it. One of the most beautiful views on earth. And I have been to multiple countries all over the United States. I have seen the Grand Canyon. I've seen many, many things in my life. Let me tell you something. That is one of the most amazing views. But it, hey, I'll tell you what, it's nothing like when I actually persevered and went through. It took me five and a half years to get my bachelor's degree. But you know what? I persevered. I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I did some silly things along the way and sat out a little bit. But I decided I wasn't going to quit. I was going to ascend to the top. Amen? And I was going to 
fulfill it, and I did it. Now, when it came to my master's, I started there, and I quit on it, and I still haven't finished my master's degree, but I am about this close to my MBA. But the point is that I quit, and I stopped, so I've had both in my life. I've, I've ascended to the top and celebrated, and I've quit three quarters of the way up, and I still got it hanging out there, right? And let me tell you something. It's a whole lot better. For, the view is a whole lot better when you ascend to the top. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. She used my life as an example, amen? They're the campers, though. The campers, they just camp out because things you've got enough. I, I, I'm okay. I, I've got enough, right? I, I, this is a good enough spot. Spiritually, I, I, I can pray and I have faith and believe God and I go to church and I even raise the left hand. And, is this left or right? I, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I got a problem with that, remember? Let's see. <laughs> left hand, right? <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> I, 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 you know how I know right and left? Because I memorized how to write my name when I was, uh, when I was young, Bob, and B's. Because I always get the B's and D's backwards because of my dyslexia, right? And so I get them backwards. So what I do is I memorize them as a picture. And so when you see the B, I write the B. And, and I know B's and D's that way. That's how I write those things. Can you imagine that? And then I learn left and right and memorize that, you know? L, right? Anyway, so, uh, you know, all these different things. But anyway, it's just you raise your left hand or you raise your right hand and you worship God and you close your eyes and, and you feel like you, you know what, I get involved. I go to the altar sometimes. I read my Bible. I read at least 10, 15 minutes a day. I memorize the scripture once a week. I'm doing pretty good. And you've come to the place, but you've decided to camp out there. God don't want you camping out at that level spiritually. Oh, I go to church every week. I'm good. You know what? God don't want you camping and out just going to church every week. God wants you to continually climb to the new level of relationship with the creator of the universe that you were intended to have. And that is a relationship just like you have with people that are close to you that you talk to, that you, that you allow yourself to cry with, that you speak the deepest things in your life, and you allow them to rock your arms of love around you and walk and talk with you every day. The Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide and strengthen you every day. Don't Camp out at, hey, this is good enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. Logan tries to get me all the time. He's like, don't camp out there, Pastor. You're going to talk about the job and, you know, doing investments and, and selling insurance and all that stuff. And he's like, don't camp out right there, Pastor. You're going to go further. He's always an encourager. You want to be encouraged sometimes? Just talk to Logan. Logan will just give you lots of, little, lots of things and he'll encourage you along the way. Because we shouldn't just camp out. We shouldn't just accept where we're at and what we got, the life we got. We shouldn't just accept, okay, this is good enough. I got a good wife. I got a good husband. I got great. I got children. I got a job. All my bills are paid. God's saying, don't just camp out. Progress to the plan of God for your life. Yes. Be someone who does not just, it is not uh, good enough. The enemy, of, the enemy of great is good. Is that true? Yep. It's a great book if you ever read it. <laughs> it's a good book. See, I am not a quitter. It was what people say. I started, I'm in it, but I'm really just kind of fighting too much. I gotta relax. I just don't, I gotta rest, I gotta quit, I gotta I, I just gotta stay here. Um, I think I'm just gonna camp out. It's it's a nice place here. I'm going to camp out at the marriage that I have. It's okay. We don't fight as much anymore. It's okay. It's an okay marriage. We don't fight that much anymore. You know, we're staying together. We're not going to get a divorce anymore. Right? This is good enough. You know what? If God's pushing you, God's, you can, I believe your marriage can become better. It can become hotter. It can become more where you rely on each other, where you help each other, where you're each other's friends. Best friend, progress toward what God has for you. Invest in your marriage. Invest in Bible studies and reading and conferences and date night and all of these things. We talked about that yesterday, didn't we, Ashley? And she said she likes to go on date nights, but somebody else who she really loves and appreciates says, you don't need date night, right? <laughs> not, not, not him, not him. <laughs> she, wanted to be, she wanted to be clear that it wasn't Adam. 
And I'm not going to tell you who it was. But the point is that and somebody gave her that advice and she's like, no, we need date night. You can have no date night if you don't want it, but I want date night. Adam right. wants date night too. See, so these things are important. And, and, and building on this relationship, it's important. But, but you can be a camper and just accept what you got. You can just accept the fact that your children really need more training and need more of your time. You can accept that's just kids. And then you can just leave them where they're at. Or you can take them to new levels in Christ. You can be a person. You can take them to church and let them hear kids' church. Let them learn the Bible. Progress forward. Or you can just camp out taking the, the less than God's best for your life. And then there are the climbers. The climbers are the ones that don't give up. And they, don't, they, don't, they don't just camp out somewhere. I'm telling you they overcome obstacles. And climbers uh, see the, the glass half full, half full, you might say, instead of half empty. empty. Climbers understand uh, that, a, that a, a, an obstacle or a bend in the road is not the end of the road, right? Climbers, they get hurt, they get bruised. They, 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 uh, they get bur bruised and hurt, but they get over it. Amen? Amen? They move on. They don't let it destroy their whole life. And I believe that God has those kind of plans for all of us here. I want to be a climber in my life. And in order to do that, there are some things that I need to do. Number one, I need to quit being a quitter. Is that true? You want, to, you want to be a climber? Quit being a quitter. Most people, many people start, they start lots of things, but then they quit when it gets hard. They quit. Quitting can become a habit just like winning. People can quit all kinds of, they quit, quit. Something gets hard, something gets tough. Other people cause them wrong. Most of the time, it's not, it's not you put all the, the spotlight on yourself and go, Oh, I got to quit because this person, it's normally it's this person, that person, this thing, things are harder for me than others. You don't like, oh, I'm just a quitter. If you got in a place where you're saying, I'm just a quitter, maybe you're on the way to being healed and whole and do better. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but the point that I want all of us to understand that I said to you was that quitting can become a habit just like winning. Let me tell you something. Winning can become a habit as well because I know I have a habit of winning. I live in the realm of winning. My wife's always like, she'll say, I just can't believe how, how things just work out for you. I can't believe how good just happens in your life. It's not because I'm a preacher. It's not because I'm a pastor. It's because I have chosen to not be a quitter. I've chosen not to give up. Amen. People called me Titanium Bob when I was younger. I'd run into a wall, no problem. Hit my head and keep going. Hallelujah. <laughs> No. They call me Titanium Bob because why? I refuse to give up and stop. I'm a winner and I know how to win and I want to keep winning. Do I lose sometimes? Yes, I do. Do I give up sometimes? Yes, I do. But most of the time, I recognize it for what it is. God has a plan and it's up there. Satan has a plan for me. It's down there. Bob has a plan. It's somewhere in the middle. But I'm not going to stay at Satan's plan and I'm not going to stay at Bob's plan. I'm going to God's plan. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Is it easy? No. Do I get tired sometimes? Yes. Do I end up falling down, getting scratches and bruises? Absolutely. But I'm here to tell you, even if you're pressed on every side, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 says this very powerfully. It says, we've been pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. It said we are defeated. It seems like all around us crushing trouble, hardship, distressed and perplexed, but I will not despair. I will not give up in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Quitting can become a habit. I want you to have a habit of winning. Amen. There are two times when you're likely to quit. Number one, when you fail something. When I fail or make mistakes, that's when I feel like quitting. Why? Because i got to start all over maybe. Because it looks very difficult. Right? And when you fail, it, it's like, fine, I'm going to give up. But it, we've got to understand very clearly that, that 
you got to keep climbing. You've got to keep going. To me, failure is the first step to actually, it's one of the steps, I should say one of the steps. Failure is one of the steps, I believe, to living in the success God has planned for you. And one, one quote I saw, it said, it said, a man is not finished when he's defeated, he's finished when he quits. Anyway, I'm going to conclude here in a minute. Both have pain. Quitting has pain, camping has pain, and climbing has pain. But one chooses and one person chooses not to quit. And the other one gives up. And I'm afraid. What I want you to know is not to have a quitting mentality. I want you to choose to not quit like others do. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to quit in your heart and in your mind. I want you to hold on to what God's plans are for your, your life. Don't quit on the things God has promised for you. Never, never, never give up. Just hold on. So number one, quit quitting. The second lesson is that I, I've learned I just can't quit. i got to quit quitting. The second lesson is is uh, um, uh, and, and it really has more to do with the, the campers but it has to do with don't unfold your tent and accept less than God's best mm. that's good don't ever tell yourself this is good enough I'm okay with this I, I've got an okay life I've got an okay marriage I've got an okay spiritual life i got an okay ministry but my ministry is good enough we can get by at the church with the ministry we got in the world. God don't need more. It's okay. I'm doing better than most. How many have heard that before? Doing better than most. But don't do that. Don't unfold your tent. At the, you might say even at the campgrounds of complacency. <laughs> right? Don't unfold your tent. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 32 is a great verse for this. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 32. It says, for the turning away of the simple will, stay, will slay them. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. Remember I told you. If I could have made any one of the major difference I would have made in my children's lives. I would have made them memorize the book of Proverbs. Before they left my home. Proverbs is full of nuggets, man. Don't have to learn the whole thing, but they could. <laughs> Sometimes we don't put enough on them. I, I memorized, I've memorized two books of the Bible. Now, they're smaller than Proverbs, but... <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that we need to, their own complacency will destroy them. Complacency destroys. Do not waste months and years in complacency. And we're going to close. I want to read the scriptures. So I want you to go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 and 14 through 14. And then we're going to, we're going to conclude with those. Not that I have already attained. So we're talking about toward, heading toward the mark, right? Not that I've already obtained, attained or am already perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I forget my mistakes, I forget the past, I forget what happened before. If God says that success is down there, it doesn't matter. I'm going to where God has me going. Amen? Amen. Amen. You've been trying to get a new life. Yeah. You've been trying to get a new life. Yeah. It's not easy to get a new life. Tell your neighbor, it's not easy to get a new life. It's not easy. It's not. It's a hard road. And some people, sometimes I have caused the problem with my own decisions. And then I needed a new life. Sometimes other people have done things in my life. Hurt me. Did things they shouldn't have done to me. 
that have caused me to get a new direction and go for the new life. And sometimes it's nothing that anyone has ever done. It is called life. But I'm here to tell you that you're going to press on to that new life. Maybe you just gave your heart to Jesus and you're really trying to live for God. You're trying to come to church. But why is it that every time I get up on Sunday morning and go to church, I fight with my husband, I fight with my wife. Why is it every Sunday morning something else comes up? Why is it that it's difficult to go to God? How come everybody's more tired on Sunday than they are on other days? <laughs> come on, right. preach. Is this true? It's spiritual. Why does everything go wrong? Today, I was even late. I was here before church started, but I'm late because I always tell people, if you're a, you do ministry in the church or work in the church, you should be at least a half an hour early. And if you're, if you're only 29 minutes, you're late. Right? And so today, I was late. Why? Because things just didn't go right for me today. My razor wouldn't work. That was a big one. And so I couldn't shave. Right? And so and I was like, what am I going to do? And I couldn't find any razors. And I was like, wow. And then uh, other things went wrong. I'm going to tell you everything went wrong. Things went wrong. The pa traffic pattern was horrible. I got a person driving 35 miles in, in a 50 mile an hour zone. Anybody ever mess with those people? <laughs> Silly people. I tried to pass, but the line wouldn't let me pass. I was like, I'm going to break the law. Uh, and then I thought, I'm going to tell the cop, I'm going to tell the police officer, well, i got to get, I'm the pastor, i got to get to church. I'm going to break the law to get to church. Oh, yeah, you're a real good pastor. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> then when the line disappears, then there's cars coming. Anyway, he went on and on. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is, right? When nothing goes right. right. Spill your coffee on yourself. You know what I'm talking about, right? Don't quit. I put two shoes on. I've been to church with two wrong, two different shoes before. An accident. So it was a pastor. Got a brown one and a black one. <laughs> See, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. You haven't apprehended the new life yet. And it's a struggle sometimes because you want to go back to your old life. Yes, yes. You want to go back to where it was maybe more comfortable and more easy when you weren't a Christian. Or maybe better, when you want to go back to that other life that was a mess and brokenness, back to the old job, back to the old ways. I'm here to tell you, you have not apprehended. But one thing I do not, I forget the stuff that's behind me, which I've made mistakes, I've sinned, I've done bad things, I quit, I, I camped out. All of that stuff is behind me. I'm going to reach forward to the new life God has for me. The new the hopes he has, the new dreams, the new jobs. I'm going to use those past failures as stepping stones to where God wants to take me. Because he's got plans for me, and more, yeah. even more important than me, he's got plans for my children, and he's yeah. got plans for my children's children. He's got plans for all of them. And I am not going to accept less than God's best for my life. Yes, amen. I'm not amen. quitting. I'm not going back. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. yeah, I feel beaten yeah. down. Yeah, I feel like that I'm not going to be able to do it. But I'm going to crawl if I have to. Yes, amen. 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 Because God has good plans for your life. Amen. For your ministry. For your relationship with him, more importantly. For your children. He wants good for you. He has joy for you and good plans for you. Amen. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. It's an upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. God didn't bring you this far to go halfway and quit and never get the Ten Commandments. God didn't take you halfway where you would never end up being all that God intended for you to be. I know it's hard but you know what you choose. You can be a quitter, you can be a camper, or you can be a climber. But I'm telling you, the view at the top is worth it. Amen? Amen. And it comes in little successes. It comes in little ones. They're all a bunch of little ones. You know, there's this and that and all these different um, uh, circles or whatever in your life, what do you want to call it? You know, you got job and family and marriage and money and you got, you know, health and and church and ministry and all these different things. Listen, be a climber in all the areas and, and have God, you know, take you through. Amen? Amen. 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 That was good. Let's all stand to our feet today for a moment. I want to know, will you go ahead? Oh, wait, wait. You can wait here for a minute. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Piano player. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you very much, God, for you are a wonderful God. I thank you, God, because I believe that you are raising up powerful people here. Raising up powerful people, people that know how to pray, pray bold prayers, people who know how to have success in their life because they're going to follow you completely. But some have been having a rough time, God, and I pray right now for all those rough patches, all that rough area, even the unknown. I pray right now, God, that you would just strengthen them. All heads are bowed. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Bob, I really am not where I need to be with God. I feel like sometimes I've quit on God really in my relationship and I am not serving him like I should be serving him. And today, I want to give my life to Jesus completely and totally. I want to repent for my sins. I believe Jesus died upon the cross and I believe he rose again. And from this day forward, I want to put my whole faith and trust in Jesus. I want to be a Christian. If that's you here today, then would you raise your hand? I'm going to pray for you. Have you pray with me. Hallelujah. Now, how many would say, Pastor Bob, sometimes I just really feel that I feel tired and weary and I feel like the stuff is going to really stop me. It's going to destroy me. And I need God to give me the strength and direction because I want to go to the top. Will you raise your hand? Amen. I want to go to the top. Put it back down. You're welcome to put it up. Put it back down. Amen. 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 Any of you? I've been complacent. And he talked about foolish people are complacent. And I'm going to have destruction because of my complacency. I just have I've settled and, and I'm camping out. But I want to go forward in the name of Jesus. How many of you are like that? Amen. I want to go up. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to. I want you to pray your own prayer right now to the Lord. I'm going to pray over you, but I want you to pray your own prayer. God, in those areas of complacency, in those areas of struggle, in those areas of hardship, Lord, I pray right now for each person that's here that feels that they're going to fail, they're going to fall, they're going to be destroyed. Lord, I pray right now that you'd help them to know you will never leave them and you will never forsake them. You have plans for them that are great. Lord, I pray you would strengthen your church right now. You would strengthen your people right now. In the name of Jesus. Let us be strengthened, God. And, and Lord, let us be honest with ourselves if we're camping out, if we're quitting. God, let us go to the new life you planned for all of us. It's going to be good, God. You've got good plans. You've got great plans, God. Let it be fulfilled in every life. In Jesus' holy name. Amen.